Welcome to the Tastemaster SA. Make sure you engage with us throughout the show using hashtag the Tastemaster SA. Bake more memories with Royal Baking Powder. Previously on the show, the bottom six were given a tricky task to stay in the competition. Make an inspired bake with carrots as the hero ingredient. After a few hiccups, Luwazi managed to blow the judges away with his carrot custard tart. Wow. And it was Kinsani who came up short and was eliminated from the competition. Oh, here we go again. Another span in the works. Ooh, cake pops. Mm, I wonder what it's for. This is going to be interesting. And then there were eight. Those of you who avoided the last elimination challenge will notice that Kensani is no longer in the running. It is never easy to take off. And I think we can all agree that all the time this is a competition, the friendship that is formed is very real. Luazi, you stepped out of your comfort zone and you flourished. Can we expect you to take more risks going forward? I'm a risk taker. I'll be doing my best. I'm feeling okay. I don't want to say confident because it's a new day, but I'm ready for anything. I'm assuming all of your attentions are firmly focused on what's right in front of us here on the table. I'd like to put your minds at rest. Today, you'll be working in pairs. Mm. Mm. I don't want to work in pairs. I don't want to, so I am a bit like ish. No, I'm quite bummed with this one. On the table are eight cake pops. One by one, in alphabetical order, you will each come up, pick a cake pop, bite into it to reveal the color. The contestant with the matching color as your cake pop will be your partner. Jay, you're first. Last time we had a team challenge, things didn't go according to plan, but I had so much fun and I really learned a lot from my partner. So I'm actually quite excited. Mm. <laughs> One of the people I'd really love to work with is Sam because I love the techniques she brings to her bakes and I think I'd really love an opportunity to learn from her. Kyle. <laughs> I wouldn't mind working with Jay. Like, I really like him. We get on. I think we could work well together. Ooh, blue. Okay, so it's not going to be with Jay, so let's see. I don't know. Loazi, you're up. Ooh. I don't know who I'd love to work with, but definitely not Sam. Her energy is just too much. I think we'll clash a lot. Oh, Ooh. <laughs> it's exciting this time. <laughs> yeah, Three cake pups. No one's paired up yet. This is going to get interesting. Megan, you're up. The suspense is absolutely killing me. Hey, hey, no one. Four cake pops, four colors, four teams. I'm getting nervous. Mobile, your turn. Come to me. I do like team challenges if I'm paired with a person that is a team player. Oh, this is a blue one. <laughs> Kyle. <It's> Kyle. Kyle. <laughs> This is a team to watch out for because they're both very technical and love bringing a lot of components. Let's see who's your teammate. Please not yellow. Nothing personal against Luazi. It's just he's a man without a plan and I am the girl with all the plans. We're not going to team up very well. Oh, it's green. Yeah. <laughs> Sam's a mom, I'm a mom. There's definitely a connection there and um, I think we'll work well together. We'll definitely know how to deal with fussy eaters too. <laughs> Suhail, it is now your turn to determine whether you're going to be on Team Yellow or Team Red. Please pick a pop. If I had to pick somebody, I would choose Luazi. He has no planning, but he also comes up with really good dishes. Oh, oh Team, wow. team Red. <laughs> oh my soul, it's going to be a bomb combination. So Tando, obviously that concludes it. Your teammate will be Luazi today. I don't know how this is going to go. He doesn't plan, I plan, so... Phew, cool. Okay, everybody, so the teams have informed. You look great. Now on to the challenge. One of the most enjoyed bakes worldwide is one that we often overlook. It's not a three-tiered cake. It's not a delicious warm apple pie. In fact, it's something a little smaller and something that is often enjoyed with a hot beverage to dip it in. Net so, Zola, vandaag gaan jullie cookies maak. Maar natuurlijk gaan ons nie so eenvoudig hou en so makkelijk maak vir jullie nie. Siende dat jullie in spanne werk, het ons het goed gedink dat jullie vir ons twee items sal maak. 
Vandaag zoeken we ons van jullie een cookie met een warm drankje paring. Oké. Okay. I think it's too simple. Biscuits. It feels like there's a trap. This has thrown me for a curveball. I was really expecting something grand today. Myself. Because a biscuit and a, and a, and warm... a beverage? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and now for today's guest judge. Zij is de stichter van een van de meest populaire cafés in Stellenbosch, Meraki. Zij heeft ook die ongelooflijke bakkerij genaamd Bloos, wat vooral bekend is voor allerhande gebak, maar vooral zo veel macarons. Dit is Corlandi Beside Note. We caught up with Corlandi at a historical wine estate in Stellenbosch for a private baking masterclass. Hello, I'm Corlandi Beside Note. Welcome to our beautiful farm, Veltefreden Estate. Come and bake with me at home. When I was 21, I had a job in Kloof Street with Melissa's The Food Company at their flagship store and I just knew that I wanted to be in the food industry. I started Meraki in Stellenbosch nine years ago and my pastry chef at the time resigned on short notice and I, as the owner of the business, was left with the task that I now suddenly, without any formal training, I now have to jump in and start baking large cheesecakes, carrot cakes, and all our classic cakes for personal orders or private orders and events and parties. So after two years of having to head up the baking side of the cafe, I fell in love with baking. I had Meraki for four years and then I expanded into another cafe and another cafe and everybody just loved our baked goods at the cafes and naturally it just happened that because of the three cafes we had a need for a central kitchen system with a baking facility so we ended up establishing Bloss Bakery. We take no shortcuts. We source the best chocolate, the best butter, and we are known for absolutely serving the most exquisite macarons. What makes our work stand out is that we don't try and reinvent the wheel. We just love traditional, classic, simple cakes and bakes. Hi there contestants, welcome to today's masterclass. I'm gonna show you how to make some biscotti and it really pairs lovely with both breakfast, lunch and dinner drinks. How do you take a biscuit to the next level? When I think of a hot drink, I just think of coffee. First, I'm gonna add my eggs to the mixer and then I'm gonna move on to the vanilla essence, cranberries, and then I've pre-grated these orange rinds, so I'm just gonna pop that in there. Lastly, I'm gonna add the almonds. I'm adding them whole because the whole almonds just gives you a nice and rustic texture to your biscotti. Let's jump into the dry ingredients. So I've got a little kitchen tip to share with you. If you don't have self-raising flour at home, you can always make your own self-raising flour by substituting it with normal cake flour and baking powder. And there's a standard kitchen rule for baking. For every cup of flour that you use, you add half a tablespoon of baking powder and voila, you've got your own homemade self-raising flour. So now we're gonna combine the wet ingredients over here with the dry ingredients. The K beta will give you just a very gentle mixing effect. Whereas when you use a balloon whisk, it's gonna give you a completely different consistency because it's gonna whisk your eggs together. Whereas you just want your ingredients to be gently combined. So I see she's following a very traditional method of making biscotti. So I quite like that, the original Italian way. It's nice and sticky, it's lots of movement in the batter. You would want to take about half of your batter and then roll it out into a nice and long sausage. Rusks and biscotti, I know that these things take a long time in the oven. They need to dry out for that great texture. Also, if you want to dunk it, you can't have a soggy biscuit in a hot chocolate or a coffee. Once you've cut your biscotti, you lay them out on a baking sheet. You pop them back in the oven for another 60 minutes or so just on a low heat of about 60 degrees so that they can just further dry out and reach a biscuity, crunchy, rusky texture. When you know you've got guests coming over, you can just simply heat up some chocolate sauce, dunk them in chocolate sauce and finish them off with some chopped almonds, chopped pistachios. Seeing her dip the biscotti in the chocolate, I think it was such a cute addition. It comes really, to life. It eh? does come to life. The biscotti looks great. I wonder what she's gonna pair it with. We've decided to do something a little bit different and show you an alternative option to pair your biscotti with mulled wine. Huh, 
I never would have thought. You put your wine in the pot. I've added half an orange sliced up in two slices, eight or 10 pieces of star anise, two or three pieces of cinnamon, two teaspoons of honey, and two tablespoons of brandy, just for that extra little punch. Pop it onto the stove, 10 to 15 minutes on a very, very low heat. You don't want it to boil, and there you go. You've got an easy peasy mulled wine. I'm just putting some citrus, which is gonna complement the citrus that's already yeah. in the biscotti. Mm. Yeah, it's gonna taste delicious. When it comes to biscuits, the world is your oyster. You can keep it simple or you can spice it up. Good luck, guys. I look forward to what you're gonna create and may the best biscuit win. Welcome, Corlandi. Hello. Here we go. Corlandi, that looks and smells sensational. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Zola. It's wonderful to be on the show with you guys today. I look forward to see what you're going to bake for us. But first, of course, let's draw some inspiration. Mm. This looks so beautiful, looks so pretty, and it's so inviting. I can't wait to taste. Ooh, I get it now. She added orange zest in her biscotti, which really pairs well with the mulled wine. Now that I'm tasting this wine and the biscotti pairing, I can tell that the challenge is actually quite complex and not as simple as I thought it is. Today, you are playing for this. <laughs> this is the Royal Baking Powder Biscuit Mastery Pin. Along with the bragging rights of winning this pin, the winning team will each go home with a Samsung Galaxy oh. Tab S7 with 15,000 Rand. No way! <laughs> oh wow, we got to win. Yeah, I won that tab. Yeah, absolutely. Best pin. Like, the so pin far. is pretty, but I won the yeah. tab. <laughs> she wants a tablet, and I just want a pin back on my apron. <laughs> Let's get you that pin. <laughs> Winning today will also mean that the team will stay out of the next elimination challenge. So, the stakes could not be any higher. Oh man, if we win this one, we get to avoid elimination round. Yes. Which I am just so sick and tired of being in. I've not been in an elimination challenge yet, and I would very much like to avoid it. <laughs> Today, there is one more twist. When the clock starts, you will have two hours to plan and execute both items. So the pressure is on. That's not enough time. My thoughts are going a million miles a minute. This is crazy. This is starting to stress yeah. me out. I think we need to get cracking here. Up next, which pair do you think will work together best? Let us know using hashtag the Tastemaster SA. Feeling inspired by Corlandi's masterclass? Stand a chance of winning a Le Creuset baking hamper. Plus, go into the draw for the grand viewer prize of the Thermomix TM6 Smart Connected Cooking Appliance. To enter, create a bake using Royal Baking Powder. Take a pic of your creation with the product and reply to the competition post on our social media pages using hashtag the Tastemaster SA. T's and C's apply. Who will create the perfect pairing and win the master pin? Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. Contestants, the stakes have never been higher. Your task today is to bake a biscuit and hot drink pairing to blow us away. Contestants, are you ready to bake more memories? Yes! yes. Three, Three, two, one, get, get baking! Let's do this, okay. Yeah. Now that's what we're gonna do. I think sometimes we can both do too much, so today we're gonna calm each other down. Oh, I'm loving this tablet. We are going to win. We're yeah. going to plan the whole situation. We have to. There's a biscuit that, that we usually make. Mm -hmm. It's spiced with cardamom and nutmeg, and it has an almond on the top. Is it the one that cracks on a little yes. bit on the top? Yeah. Okay. I'm so chuffed that you know those biscuits. Okay, so we don't call them anything in particular. It's just that cookie with the almond on top. So <laughs> Back in Durban, we call them naan katais. I'm enjoying the Samsung tab because it's got the S Pen and a keyboard and it allows me to sketch out my plan in real time. It does justice to make a tea. Mm. I think like a spiced ginger. Ginger! ginger. ginger. Yeah. We're feeling good as a team. We are thinking of going the savoury route, so we're trying a savoury cookie. So, 
I don't know. I'm just struggling to wrap my head around how to elevate a savory cookie to be special enough. I'm happy actually that she agreed to, <laughs> <laughs> to making the savory biscuit. Stepping outside my comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. Ugh. You know what we can call our bake? Mm. Like mum's afternoon off. Turrets. Okay. I so need that. <laughs> if there was ever the challenge to do Max, I feel like having Gorlandi here is our sign. I think that's very courageous, but I'm keen. Okay. Get I am making fun. French macarons. Okay. So I'm grabbing almond flour, icing sugar, granulated sugar, because I'm doing a hot sugar syrup, and then some eggs. Royal baking powder. <laughs> Baking more memories, of course. Kyle and Mobile. Hello, lady. You seem to be working in silence. How are you going to find a balance? Because I know that you usually have many components. You too, actually, in your last couple of challenges, are we going to have an endless <laughs> amount of ingredients? So we are doing a white chocolate and Earl Grey tea steamer. And then we're going to pair that with a blueberry shortbread and um, a lavender marshmallow. Uh, okay. Wow. With our dish, if you want to add more sugar into the actual hot milk drink, you can add a dome of white chocolate instead of you asking for sugar. Do you think that you're going to be able to make it in time? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Because the marshmallows are on the go. These bombs are almost done. That's basically done. It's just to reduce this to jam consistency and then snap onto our shortbread, shortbread soon in like 10 minutes. I really want to create like a jolly jammer vibe in terms of our biscuits. Mm -hmm. I think we're doing this yeah. with the blueberry jam and yeah, it's going to be really cute. I'm just chopping up some lavender because we're making lavender shortbread. Tando and Loazi. Hi. So, non-planner, usually with a plan, how are we planning together? <sighs> it's going great. <laughs> <laughs> Today we'll be making savoury biscuits. Oh! Yes. Yum. Oh, interesting choice. Okay, okay, yeah. savoury. First, tell us what the biscuit is. Um, I don't know the name, but... <laughs> what about the flavours? Oh, so flavours, <laughs> uh, cheese, mm -hmm. um, and a couple of things. <laughs> Tando's busy with some magic over there. So this is cinnamon, cardamom, ginger, turmeric, all of those like good stuff. So the base is milk, almond milk. Oh, almond milk. Yeah. Okay. Moon milk is basically milk infused with spices. Most people drink it at night. You've got like those soothing spices that just help you sleep. I'm thinking it's actually great that she's making it. Just to calm yourself down a bit. I'm nervous because neither of you seem to know what the plan is. I thought you'd have more of an influence on Loazi and Loazi promised that he was going to plan from going... No, he from... decided to take the lead, so I have no plan too. Wow! <laughs> Loazi's busy with the cookie and I'm thinking, what can I do to elevate and bring this cookie to the next level? Parmesan crisps, so grate the cheese, get it on, put it in the oven, simple. Should I scrap the jam or should I just... What do you think? I think it's worth trying it. If it doesn't work, then at least we have something else to add. No, not my vibe. It could make the cookie soft. How about this? I'm just going to get on, make a jam, try it, and if it doesn't work, we stick to the original. Plate. I'll start another dough and maybe you can try from there. Okay. I'm seeing some interesting spices over there. Honey, cinnamon, pistachio, almonds. Might there be a biscotti on the cards? Not quite. So it was actually quite a cool situation yeah. because we have so many colored aunties at home who <laughs> bake a bucket of biscuits to sell to earn an income. One of my favorite ones is the round, uh, sort of cracked biscuit with an almond on top. Mm -hmm. yes. And in sharing that with Sohail, he, he said that this is actually something that they do in their family. That is so exciting. What a perfect match then, hey? Yeah. Perfect yeah. match, dude. Yeah. So, and you're pairing it with? So we're doing almost like a sweet tea. We're going to use some evaporated milk, ginger, honey. You know, we want different spice sensations lingering, taking you back to sitting and having tea with your granny, being nostalgic. Yeah. I have a very important question. Okay. Do you dip or don't you? No dipping. Mm, Always dip. Oh, that's so good. Pina, pina colada. <laughs> <laughs> Megan, Sam, what's happening Hello. here? Hey. I'm spotting some interesting ingredients, but I've also spied with my little eye a very well-known word over here. 
Macaron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so macarons are usually very finicky, but yes. Way back home, I'm kind of okay with them. I am a little nervous today because it's a new oven, so it's a little bit out of my comfort zone. I'm not in a kitchen that I'm familiar with, so I'm gonna wing it today and we're gonna... I'm sure you're gonna nail it. I know she's got this. Yes. We just need to get our flavors right. I'm doing a coconut ganache and a caramelized pineapple filling mm. for my macaron. Beautiful. And we're gonna... Delicious. Like a passion fruity... Pina colada. Like a pina pina colada. colada. Yes. Yeah, like a refreshing oh. on the beach kind of... Because we're both like moms <laughs> of young kids yeah. and we need a chill. We we need a bit of sunshine. So, yeah, exactly, so exactly. we're going for our tropical fantasy here. Okay, yeah. well, yeah. tell us the other half of the fantasy, the hot drink. It's going to be a rooibos tea infused with ginger and rosemary. Contestants, <laughs> half an hour gone. You have an hour and a half to go. Come on, guys! I'm pretty glad we decided to do a marshmallow. Mm. It's basically like an Italian meringue process whereby you're cooking and you're fluffing your egg whites with a hot sugar syrup, volumizing it adding your flavor, adding your gelatine to set it, piping it into your desired shapes. Don't push too much down. Now I'm just gonna, literally gonna sprinkle them on. Right. I'm gonna put these in the fridge just so that they set. But I've got one going in the oven just to test it out because I've never made this biscuit before. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Okay, what else do we want to do? Sometimes less is more. The thing is, I've been doing less is more and they don't like it. I'm not relaxed. I am still feeling like this cookie is not enough. We will be fine. You literally stress my whole life. <laughs> Up next, will Tundo and Luazi sort out their differences? Let us know what you think using hashtag the Tastemaster SA. What's the caramel for? This is uh, sugar syrup. What's it for? To temper the egg whites. If my sugar syrup is not at the correct temperature, my eggs won't temper correctly, and then my max will crack. I've never used that before, hey? I use it all the time. Do you have to rub it on your hands so the oils come out? I'm so constantly thinking of ways that we can elevate this. So I pecan some of our drink and infuse Please, it. a little bit of the drink, hey? Yes, so I'll... <laughs> I'm gonna infuse some of the lemon verbena in it and then just give it a try. Look, I'm, I'm just trying to make the most out of the time, dude. I get you. Do you think adding turmeric in there is just too much? Yes. <laughs> okay. The aroma smells amazing. I think it might be a winner. I'm a little bit stressed. We just want our marshmallow to set. It's a recipe that can go either way. It's sometimes difficult to gauge, so it's a bit of a gamble, so we'll see, but um, I'm really liking the color. This isn't right, I need to start again. Alright, no stress. It's not right, it needs to be thicker. thicker. Much thicker. I make Macs all the time and I should be able to do them in my sleep. The pressure is definitely on. I think we'll scrap it. Okay. We'll start again. Okay, don't stress, we got this. Ooh, that's strong. I'm tasting this lemon verbena concoction and it tastes like an ashtray. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with like you. Gone with the wind, that is. Make it a lot smaller and a lot flatter. Because otherwise, they're going to say, this is just gone. This is so stressful. I saw you guys taking a sneaky taste. You seem to be done. We're not done. Okay, what's going on? So we've baked our savory cookie. Uh-huh. And it bakes a lot like a scone and less like a cookie. So we okay. want it to be more crunchier, like more cookie than scone. So we're cutting it a lot thinner. Okay. So it bakes crunchier. Okay, and you're not worried about overworking the dough? Not I am worried about that, okay. but that is not going to work. Have you tasted everything together? Does everything go well together? Are you happy with the plan? Mm, we're not sure there. We, we, we are not sure, but okay. yeah. Okay, you guys are making me very nervous because every time I come here, you say you're not sure. If you're unsure, now's the time to actually decide on your next move. Sugar syrup attempt number two. I think I overcooked my sugar syrup earlier. Contestants, one hour has passed. One hour left to complete. Hey, halfway through, guys. Woo! Let's go.
Just let me know if I should bake my sweet cookie or we're going with this. Yeah. How long did they take? 10 minutes. Okay. He chilled. Well, he's chilled. <laughs> so, Hale just likes to stress. Now, biscuits are getting a nice crack on the top, which is what we're looking for. Um, oh. I am making my dough and I accidentally throw in way too much of flour, which means my dough is going to be dry at this stage, which is not what we want. I'm quite annoyed with myself. Do you need to breathe? Yes. Breathe. I'm a lot happier with this. So, it's a peak. Put it on my head. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Yeah, I'm ending the stove, making beverages, making... <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? <laughs> Mobile and Kyle are working like smooth. Like there's no, they're not even speaking. They just seem to be in sync. Then she starts laughing at us because we're stressed in the station. See how your dough's not staying round? Because it's overworked. Plus they're making sweet biscuits. Tondo, mm -hmm. there's no time to be starting all over. Like, that's, no, we need to find a way. My brain is like, if you've got an hour left, try something else. Listen, I'm gonna go with my gut. Rather us have a plan B and then just serve something that we're not 100% about. I'm just gonna show you what. Oh. Did you know how to do this? This one, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. Mm, that's split. It is split, eh? Don't worry. I'm worried about this icing sugar, hey? This is not usually what the pattern looks like. That's not bad, though. It's not too bad, yeah. I'm trying to fix my split chocolate jar. It's a ganache with coconut cream, but my, it has split. So I'm trying to restore it. I feel like it's getting worse. I'm just thinking of making the sweet ones. As a backup, I'd rather just have options ready in case anything doesn't work out. She's scared. I think these are good. You actually brave in such little time left. Luazi, Fritz. how are you feeling? And the reason why I'm asking specifically is I see that your teammate is starting something from scratch. It's a backup. Okay. I'm gonna make white chocolate cookies and that should pair well with the beverage we've already made yes. so far. So we don't have to change the whole plan. Okay, it is a dramatic change. Is time on your side for this mission? Not really, mm. no. <laughs> Contestants, we've got 45 minutes left. Come on, Let's go. That's nice, eh? Ooh, it's like, it's like sour. sour. Yeah. It's actually just the macarons and the ganache. We're busy with our ganache as well. Yeah, we get in there. White chocolate and thyme are a classic flavour. Feels like my life depends on this one cookie and this beverage. <laughs> ah, what's wrong? Ginger. Too much. Yeah. If I had okay. anything wrong here, it's fixed now. <laughs> OK? So can I just help you making cups like that? Yeah. Our first batch of cookies look excellent. Yeah. It's exactly what we were looking for, but we had the time to spare. So I think we're definitely going to pipe some of this jam into the next batch. Maybe it will be a winner. Contestants, you have 30 minutes to go. Ooh. Final 30 minutes. Let's get those biscuits and drinks done. Come on, guys. Ooh. Ooh. OK, let's go. Let me get these in the fridge. Time running out, and I don't even have time to think if the moon milk and the new biscuits are actually going to work with the thyme and the white chocolate. Just focused on getting a new biscuit out. I feel like this is better. I just want to yeah. cut. I feel like now it's going to get here. Yeah. I told them we must cut. Cookies have been in the oven for 15 minutes, and they're looking great. We're very happy with them. They're nice and golden brown. I'm loving this golden color. It's just so beautiful. The ambers, oh, wow. Oh, no, you are so rude. You're even off. No, no. This love hate you. Did you see that? So Did you see that? It's a shortbread you always cast the sugar when it comes out the oven. When you take it out the oven, it's best to sugar it with caster sugar so you get that cuteness about it. It's an old school tip. Can we check if our foam works? Oh, yeah. Mmm. <laughs> now you're smiling. 20 minutes to go. Um, nothing is in the oven yet. But... They don't take time to bake. I think they bake for about 15 minutes. 
No, it's just drizzled chocolate. We're just gonna drizzle it on top of the cookies. Sam, they're rising. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there's a rise. <laughs> Through the oven door, I can see that they've risen, which is exactly what I want. But now the thing is, the minute I take them out, will they fall? Will they not? I'm praying they don't. Well, These are not the way I intended them to be. Wrong. No, I'm not happy. I'm but it looks like a macaron, so okay. If it looks like a duck and acts like a duck, it's a duck. So everyone started off the day really chilled, relaxed. Now things are heating up. I see a lot of nervous faces. What do yes, you think? There's quite a bit of scrambling going on in the kitchen now and contemplating should we go this way or that way. Um, I'm a bit worried about Tando and them. It seems that round two has also left them a bit. Um, Obviously, nerved. this is what we wanted. I mean, short amount of time, mm -hmm. high pressure. They thought initially this was going to be easy. It is not. It is not. And working in a team, I think, is an obstacle that they're also getting used to. So we threw a lot at them today. But like we said, the stakes are high. It's this stage of the competition. Hey, I'm nervous. Deelnemer, on say 10 minutes where on this in the last 10 minutes. Come on, guys. Come on. Rustic it is. No, it's not rustic. That is it. We need to come up with the garnish. <laughs> I want to jam the macaron with ganache and then fill it with the pineapple filling. Dip it in the tea. The second batch of cookies come out of the oven. I'm tasting it, pairing it with a drink, and I'm actually just, I'm not feeling it. We're going to stick with the original plan and go head on for it. For the plate team, we're thinking an afternoon ladies' tea. Something very subtle, but nice colours. I'm very glad we've got the cups we've got and the blues. This has come out and they're perfect. They have the soft inside mm. and the chocolate inside, the thyme. It sings. I'm cooling this down so that we can be able to put chocolate and then just finish them off with some almond flakes. Garnishing the plate. Garnishing the plate. Stop baking, everybody. Step away from your cookies and drinks. Time is up, everybody. I'm so happy we did this. Right, everybody, let's taste. Next, whose biscuit and hot drink pairing will blow the judges away? Let us know using hashtag the Tastemaster SA. Who will avoid elimination and earn a spot in the next round? Bake more memories with a Tastemaster SA and tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. It was definitely a long bake, but I'm glad that we got something out on the plate for the judges to taste. So Tando, how did you experience Luazi as your teammate today? Luazi is really fun. I won't lie, he's very, very fun. He's very relaxed, and I think that was a nice element to sort of add into how I usually work. I mean, I am relaxed, but have more of a plan, and Rosie's just like, let's see how things go, you know? <laughs> and well, we saw, and we saw, and we saw. <laughs> and now we're here. <laughs> we are here indeed. So, Loisy, what made it on the plate? Today, we've got white chocolate thyme biscuits and moon milk, which is made of almond milk. and whole lot of spices. I don't think we messed up the pairing, but I just hope it's not a complete disaster. I thought this drink was so lovely. The warm spice flavor is really inviting. For some reason, it was, it was very familiar and comforting, which I really enjoyed. The cookie, I love the combination of thyme and white chocolate. I think that was an inspired combination. So well done for going bold on your flavors. Do the two marry well together? I'm not sure. The late addition was a great effort at the time that you were given that you could still churn that out. I think, bravo, well done. Does it blow my socks off? Not necessarily. I uh, love the drink. The almond milk was a beautiful addition, I thought. Um, so very flavorful, maybe not the best marriage. Average, not bad. 
The two separate from each other, I think they're wonderful, but I think that pairing sweet with sweet might be an overload of sweet, but the drink is beautiful. Good individually, together. Gosh. We can never get married. <laughs> I'm feeling really yeah. confident, like I think our dessert is so cute. It is cute and I feel that the flavour is there. Kyle and Nobile, I feel like I have just sat down to a really elegant high tea. It looks so beautiful, your presentation is really wowing me. I hope that the flavour also delivers. Today we've prepared some lavender scented shortbread with a blueberry centre and we've got some marshmallows and a cinnamon white chocolate dome. And then the hot drink, that's a white chocolate and Earl Grey tea steamer with a bit of vanilla foam on top and then the dome is actually something that you can add in if you wish to sweeten it up. I think we really did well but you know at the end of the day it can swing either way. It's mm. one of two. What the but we did great. My biggest challenge here is to figure out which item it pairs better with. It is okay. that good. Thank you. The pairing, nailed. Absolutely nailed. And the best jolly jammer I've ever had, <laughs> by far. I love all the little touches that you've added to every single element on this plate. From the beautiful vanilla pod to be used as a little stirrer, the chocolate bomb that you can drop in there. It's got beautiful flavor. The biscuit, it's nice and crispy. The jam that you've made from scratch and paired with that beautiful lavender marshmallow, I think all the components just comes together beautifully. I think that everything was perfectly executed and wow, what a flavor marriage. Well done. Woo! Nailed it, it like we said. <laughs> yeah, we did it. I'm very happy. I'm so ecstatic. Today's been a lot of fun, but reality sinks in. It's not just about those Samsung tablets today, it's also about that elimination, and I really want us to avoid that today. Jay, Suhail, I really enjoyed hearing your story your, of this childhood memory where you shared this biscuit as children that was common in both your families, and it was beautiful to see how you worked together as a team around this theme. Jay and I prepared a naan katai, so it's spiced with cardamom and nutmeg. The tea, we made a sweet ginger infused tea. And yeah, we're just happy that we put something from our hearts yes. onto the plate for you. I'm really stressed. I think Sahel is actually very confident in what we've produced today. Yes. But there's still that thing in the back of our mind that says we should have done a lot more. Not a good look, eh, for our dish, eh? Oh. This, the ginger spice took me by surprise. I absolutely love this biscuit. It's perfectly baked, it's crispy throughout, crunchy, perfect for dipping. It doesn't fall apart when you dip it. The ginger, when I took a sip, took me by surprise because I didn't expect so much spice. But actually, I think it was lovely. Once you get over the initial, oh, okay, that's ginger sort of warms your throat and it definitely does pair so well with the biscuit. Guys, you nailed it. I love your biscuit. I love the polenta in it that gives that graininess and just makes it different to a normal flour biscuit. And it pairs beautifully with a strong ginger in the drink. And I think it's a beautiful pairing. Beautiful biscuit, beautiful tea pairing to that biscuit. Thank you. I'm actually so glad we both opted to stick to our guns today. I'm just glad we didn't use that jam. Still on about that jam. <laughs> the macarons look absolutely beautiful. That pineapple, when I smelt it, it really brought me to an island experience. Ladies, moms, how did you work together today? I had a good time with Megan today. It was a different style that I found within myself. It's not the usual way I'll be in the kitchen, especially when it comes down to work. It's like head down and you do the thing. And she brought me out of that a little bit and she brought that goofy side out of me, which I'm so grateful for. <laughs> I've never made macarons before, so it was definitely a good learning um, experience for me. And yeah, I loved working with Sam. It was, it was a great day. You took a big risk making macarons in front of the macaron queen herself. 
It's inspired with pina colada flavors. So we like uh, coconut and there's a pineapple jam inside and then it's got a coconut ganache as well. We didn't want to overwhelm those flavors in the delicate balance of the macaron with something heavy. So we did a ginger tea with got orange in there and we got some rosemary in there as well. Interesting. I believe in what we did today and the flavors are there. Now it's out of our hands. We did what we could. Megan, Sam, I love that. Because you said you're going to make a pina colada flavor, in my mind, I would have naturally gone towards a white chocolate and pineapple combination. But I think you have surprised me completely. I'm tasting two things. I'm tasting chocolate, but I am tasting pina colada. So you've definitely nailed it in terms of flavor and you've given it an extra taste and profile by adding the dark chocolate to it. I love how the pineapple combines with the ginger, the rosemary and the orange. In terms of your macarons, I think they're beautiful, they're soft, you've got feet on the edges, if there's no hollow shell, you've done an exceptional job in making these beautiful macarons. Well done. Mm -hmm. Against all odds, the macarons that I managed to produce in this kitchen came out great. Delicious but I do have to disagree about the pairing itself. For me, the two clash. They don't really work together. I actually think that they work against each other. When you have a bite of the macaron and then you have the tea, the tea washes away all the macaron and then it's sort of, you repeat the game, trying to sort of find each other in your mouth and they do compete for me. I agree completely. It was not complimentary at all for me. Macaron has been celebrated, justifiably so. Not a good pairing. Good effort though. Thank you. Thank you. They came for us. That was that was intense. I feel like that feedback took me from hero to zero real quick. I disagree with the two of you <laughs> <laughs> on the combination. I believe macarons should be paired with something very clean and simple. I always say that you must let the macarons sweetness be the hero and have a drink that's very muted in taste. Mm -hmm. Decision mm -hmm. time. Decision time. Today we're definitely not winning. Yeah, no, we're um, not winning. You can kiss the tablets goodbye. I'm sorry, but it's it is okay, what it is. It's okay, even though I already chose my color. Up next, which pair do you think will walk away with a mastery pin? Let us know using hashtag TheTasteMasterSA. Only one contestant will win the grand prize of a Thermomix TM6 Smart Connected Cooking Appliance, Le Creuset Baking Accessories and state-of-the-art Samsung Home and Kitchen Appliances, including a 45-litre convection microwave oven with sensor cook technology, who will earn the title of the Taste Master. Bake more memories with a Taste Master SA and Royal Baking Powder. Contestants, what an interesting day it's been. A very fascinating and unique challenge. All over, I thought, an interesting result. Megan and Samantha. Loazi and Tando. Unfortunately, your two teams will be going into the elimination challenge. Today was all about mastering the pairing. And unfortunately, your drink and biscuit combination didn't quite meet our expectations. Uh, Another elimination. I'll show you how we do this. <laughs> Fourth elimination round, man. Yeah. I should get a trophy for this, you know. <laughs> You'll get a participation badge. Carl Ngobile. Perhaps the best use of lemon that I've ever experienced in food. The combination of your shortbread and jelly that you made the white chocolate bomb with Earl Grey tea and your little marshmallow sang me away. It was beautifully executed. So Hail, Jay, that non katai transported me to a time and place where I just wanted to hang around, spend time and get to know people better. It was excellent. But as you know, this is a competition and there can only be one winner. So, with no further ado, I would like to ask Orlandi to present the winner. We hotly debated choosing the winner today, but we've made our decision. Today's Royal Baking Powder Biscuit Mastery Pin goes to... 
goes to Kyle and Mobile. Woo! We nailed it. Oh, yes! Oh. <laughs> so pretty. And it looks like our short red. Oh yeah, wow, it's a sign. And of course, your Samsung Galaxy Tab S7. As much as the pin is nice, but we're the new owners of the Samsung Galaxy Tab. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kyle, Nobile, congratulations and well done. You are safe. For the rest of you, we'll see you at the Elimination Challenge. I am really disappointed with myself to go through another Elimination Challenge, but I guess I'm going to nail this one. Do you know what? It's been good. Elimination time, it's game on. Next Friday, the bottom six must fight to get one step closer to the title. But in this elimination, there's a twist, along with a challenge that will push their technical baking skills to the limits. The stakes could not be higher. Another feel-good production.